3D Fred Flintstone Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be starting a two-part series of the Flintstones. So today it's going to be Fred Flintstone, and it's just like their bust type of a portrait view. And so I absolutely love these. The Flintstones was one of the few cartoons I watched when I was little, and I've always loved it. In fact, I spent the day watching it, or the night, I guess, watching it a couple couple weeks ago. I hope you guys like it as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos Bye. as well. I'm going to begin with a gradient background of a shimmery green, kind of a mossy green, into a really shimmery white. So first I applied that mossy green and brushed it up towards the cuticle, and then I'm going to continue my gradient with the shimmery white brushing it down. Then encapsulate the nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure that that gradient that you just worked so hard on stays pretty and perfect. The great thing about encapsulating a gradient is if it did really end up perfect when you were done sculpting it, when you file it, it's not going to mess it up. So then file the nail into shape, and for this nail, I just went with a medium grit barrel bit and made it easy on myself. Just cleaned up all the edges, make sure it looks nice and pretty. Now we're going to begin sculpting Sir Fred, and I'm going to begin with some tan acrylic, and I'm going to sculpt his head and his neck. So the great thing about sculpting Fred is that his actual like basic face shape is very easy. He's got, if you just kind of break it down, if you look at the top of his head, it's like a square shape and then he's got this little triangle shape thing coming down. So depending on, you know, how much you break down a character shape, for me, for whatever reason, I think Fred's is easier. Some character shapes, like the Disney princesses, they've got all these subtle nuances in the shapes of their faces that they really are a little bit harder to really get perfect. Fred's is just so straightforward that if you're getting into character sculpting, he's a good one to go with because it really is, like I said, really straightforward. So then I'm going to fill in his outfit with orange, and I've been trying to decide what you want to call it, if it's an outfit or a dress or a shirt. He doesn't have like a shirt and pants on, so I want to call it a dress, but call it what you will. Fill in whatever you want to call that thing with orange, and then we're going to create his sort of five o'clock shadow look with a shadow around his cheeks and his chin. So just fill in that triangle area, like I'm going to call it, with a slightly darker shade of tan acrylic. If you don't have two shades that are so close together like this, take a little bit of brown acrylic and mix it into a touch of your tan to get that color. Then we're going to carve in the shape of his mouth while that darker layer of tan is currently curing, so just very carefully carve in his lips. And then with teal, we're going to be adding his tie, because why wouldn't you wear a tie with your animal skin dress? That just seems to make perfect sense. So then we're just going to do that. So it kind of borders his chin, and then after you have that first part of it down, you're going to need to add the part of the tie that is hanging down. And then after you have that, then you just need to add a very simple little skinny knot right where the two sections meet. So this isn't the first time I've done a Flintstones set. One of my favorite hand-painted sets I've ever done is a Flintstones theme. And it has um, Fred and Betty, or I mean Barney and Betty as well as Fred and Wilma. And it was hand-painted and I did it so long ago. It was one of the first times I ventured into doing anything with a character's face. And it was one of those heart-pounding moments of actually painting a character's face. And it was so rewarding when I was finished with it. So if you guys want to check that video out, I will definitely put a link to it in the description box below. So now going back to my original lighter shade of tan, I added Fred's arm and his ear, and now I'm going to be adding his nose. So his nose reminds me of a hot dog shape, or like a hot dog bun shape, I suppose, sticking out the side of his face. Plan that back just a little bit so it smooths into the rest of where his face is, and then we're going to finally add his hair. So I'm going to take some black acrylic and set the bead down right on top of his head, and then push and pull that black acrylic up across the top of his head, and this tapers towards the side of his nose, and then add a second little bit to pull it into a second little quiff of hair, just like so. Make sure that you take a monomer soak brush and clean up that white background so that there's not these black stains all over that and make it look much, much more clean and orderly. Add a little bit of hair sticking off the back of his head that's a little bit um, unruly. And then when you're adding the paint, or when you're filling in the details with paint, we'll add those couple little hairs that stick straight up. So don't worry about those with the acrylic. Just let the paint handle those in a moment when we get there. I'm going to finish off those little bits of hair off the back of his head with a couple more. It's like three petal shapes almost, if you like to break things down. And then we're going to 
and go through and we're going to be adding all kinds of outlines on our Mr. Fred Flintstone. So the Flintstones are a heavily outlined type of animation and so whenever I have a design that's that way I like to you know kind of stick with it and not veer from the path that was taken by the animators when they created their masterpiece. So we're going to just stay with it and to do these delicate outlines you're going to want to dilute your paint ever so slightly and that is going to give you a much easier consistency to work with to create these thin little lines and when you're working on top of outlining something that's 3D it takes a lot of practice because your paint is going to want to run all over the place and you have to be very ca um, cautious about where the bristles of your brush are so that you only touch where you want the paint to be. So fill in his mouth with that black paint and then add a couple little sort of triangular spots across his, I don't know, saber tooth cat suit. It's going to keep bothering me. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> then add his eyebrows and then fill in his little outlines of his eyes. If you wanted to have sculpted his eyes in, you certainly could have and taken some white acrylic back when you're sculpting things and done his eyes. But for him, I felt like his eyes would be better off just painted. So then we're going to take and fill in those eye outlines with some white acrylic paint. See how nice they stand up off that background? Since the background is a shimmery white and not a true snow white, it does really have a nice vivid effect with his eyes to make them stand out and look extra lively. I added a little bit of red in his mouth for his tongue, and then we're going to take and fix up his eyes a bit more, touch up the outlines, add his pupils, and then add those couple little hairs that are sticking straight up off of his head. Then with some gel sealer, make the background really, really shiny. Those shimmery background colors look fantastic. And then apply some matte top coat over Mr. Fred Flintstone, and that's it. Definitely come back tomorrow for the Wilma design, and like I said before, if you are a Flintstones fanatic, I have plenty of, uh, or another Flintstones design, a couple of them at least that I'll put in the description box, and I will see you next time. Bye!